Hello and welcome to Spacey, a Python package for natural language processing explained for beginners. I'm your instructor Kashif Mantaza from AI Sciences and in this video we are going to talk about the installation of Spacey, parts of speech tagging, named entry recognition, sentence segmentation, words and document similarities. Although uh, Spacey is not just limited to these features, but these are very fascinating features in NLP. Spacey is much more than that, but in this brief video, we will, we will be talking briefly about uh, these features. Uh, if you are new to our channel, uh, just a brief introduction of AI Sciences. At the platform of AI Sciences, we are actually uh, providing a lot of services regarding artificial intelligence and data science, including courses, uh, including consultancies and uh, on-demand software development, product development, and whatnot. Um, and uh, it, it is better to better to uh, browse uh, through and explore the link given below uh, in the description uh, to see more about uh, AI sciences. And if you are a regular viewer uh, of our channel, then be ready for another fascinating video on the platform of AI sciences. So let's begin. <laughs> Um, first of all, let's see how can we install Spacey. There are many ways, if you go to official page of Spacey, there are many ways uh, to install Spacey. One easiest way is through pip, although there are conda ways and there are other many other ways of installing Spacey. Um, it may be better to update the setup tools and then you can just call install Spacey. This hyphen U will be for updated, whatever the updated package is. And once you are done with installing Spacey, then you have to download different models for different languages. For example, EN for English and this SM for small model. Uh, for the same language, uh, you'll be having another model called MD, which is kind of a median model, um, maybe a, having a larger sport than a small model. And then we have an LG, a very large model built on a very large corpora. So you have to, you have to download these, um, these models independently than installing Spacey. So once you have installed Spacey, it is better to download all three uh, models uh, because uh, several times, um, most of the time, this SM package is more than enough. But if you go to word similarities and stuff, maybe you need MD package. And further, if you need transformer support and uh, the support for training new models, maybe you need LG model. So assuming that installation have been done, uh, let's see what kind of services, what kind of um, uh, beautiful services are available in uh, in Spacey. So first of all, let's import Spacey as import Spacey, and then Spacey has its own displayer called Displacey, which make a certain kind of displays much better than uh, the normal or the normal print command in uh, Python. And let's import NumPy as well for because most of the vector representations of words they can be converted to NumPy arrays and one can do vector arithmetic in NumPy very quickly. So yeah, let's import that. And here we are importing LG package. Let me import basically, I have already downloaded both small and large packages. So let's import small package. If we have, if we have imported small package, then this is the vocabulary, all the list of the vocabulary that is available in English language for this package. Um, so L, if you see the length of L, that is basically 83,431 total tokens in the vocabulary. And if you, for example, want to see uh, in this particular vocabulary what is there at the number, at, at the index 432, that will be a number. If you also want to see, for example, what is there at NLP dot vocab dot strings, uh, what is there? What is the index of, what is the index of uh, the token number? Then you can see it's 432. Further, if you import a larger package, for example, LG, then uh, in that case, you'll be having a uh, dictionary or vocabulary of much larger length than earlier. It has a lot of words around 7 lakh. And uh, again, you can index um, in the, the same thing in the same way. 
Now, once you have imported one package that is uh, that fulfills your need, then we are ready to actually process the text. A document in uh, Spacey is just a string. And this NLP, which is the model that you have loaded, it is actually the natural language processing on that document and it returns a doc object, DOC object, document type object in Spacey. This document type object contains a lot of information. For example, the tokens in the string or the text, um, the lemmas, the parts of speech, and is a particular token a stop word or not. So for example, if we have applied um, this NLP on this particular text, then this doc document, this doc object has a lot of information. Let's see that information. For each token, there's a text of token. Uh, what is the root of the token defined as lemma? What part of speech it belongs to? Whether that particular token is a stop word or not, there is a stop word list in Spacey as well. So for example, if we see Apple, um, that's, the, um, that's the token, text, Apple. And this is the root or the lemma. That's uh, the apple is a proper noun in this particular case, and this is not a stop word. Is um, that's a token. That's the lemma, and that's an auxiliary. And uh, true for uh, this is basically a stop word. Now, uh, so now you can see the third token as looking, and uh, um, again the lemma is look. It's a verb, and it is not a stop word, and so on. Um, so one interesting thing, this one is a uh, number and it is not a stop word and so on. Um, so that's how you can process any text. This is a simple text. You can have any long text or you can have even files uh, read in a string and you can just apply NLP on that, not a big deal. Uh, further, if we do dependency parsing, if we want to see dependency parsing on this particular sentence, then we can see what kind of uh, dependencies are there that are there in NLP in a very cute and um, I mean dependency graph way using the command displacy. Here displacy dot render the document and the style is dependency parsing. Later we will see for named entity recognition that displacy dot render can be given uh, another um, parameter inside to display a named entity recognition in a much fruitful way. Next let's see the named entity recognition uh, which means what kind of tokens they belong to what kind of entities. Uh, so taking the same example, Apple is looking at buying UK startup for one billion. Um, let's let's just um, see the entities, their text and their label. And later, this is from print command and later we will see how this display C actually displays it beautifully. So first let's see. Apple is an organization, UK is a geographic location and one billion is a money symbol. So these are the entity labels for these tokens. Um, let's see um, a beautiful display given by its built-in display. See, Apple is an organization is looking at buying UK, which is the which is some location, geographic location. Start up for one million, which one billion, which is money. So that's one very beautiful way of displaying the named entity recognition of your text. Next, let's see the sentence segmentation. It is uh, not easy uh, doing sentence segmentation in different languages. It uh, actually, typically it builds uh, using machine learning models, particularly where the sentence ends. Sometimes the separators of sentence, they actually are, um, they actually are inside certain tokens like this. But still the spacey sentence segmenter is intelligent enough to look after these kind of abbreviations and not confuse them with um, sentence separator. So we again have some uh, a document, uh, some text. We apply NLP on that. And for each sentence in doc.sentences, let's print that sentence. So he is always late, that's one sentence. The other is I'm going to home now. And the third one is what do you think about UK and USA? Here the dots are not confused with the sentence segmenter. So next uh, we see how can we represent these uh, different words as vectors. So for example, if you see this W1, so W1 dot um, vector, if you see vector, if you see that vector, that's the vector representation of a W1 in certain embedding. Uh, also, we can see the length of that vector, how many components are there in this particular vector. 
what dimensional embedding, this, this is 300 dimensional glove embedding basically that is there for this um, word king. Similarly, if you want to find out the similarity between the word uh, king and the word queen, for example, then the similarity measure offered by um, the spacey is basically the cosine similarity. You can see the word uh, king is more similar to queen as compared to the word king, for example, to let's say, um, let's say some other word like uh, maybe um, phone, maybe. So this similarity is much lower than this one. Uh, and that is based on cosine similarity. It is also possible in, um, in Spacey that given a word, you find out the top uh, most similar words uh, that are there against that word. For that, I have written this function that is not available a uh, built-in function in Spacey. I've just written this function for you. Most similar, that's a word vector, and that's the how many words uh, most similar words you want to find out. For that, you can have a lot of, uh, for all vocabulary, you can have vectors. And for inside the vectors, you have a similar function. And given a word, you can find out the similarity of that with all of them. And uh, after that, you can just get the this, this result, ms. You can just um, get the top ones back. So let's run this. Uh, for example, let's have a word like um, W as a word like uh, NLP, word vector, that's a vector. So NLP, for example, the word is, uh, for example, exceptional, and that is a vector. That's the word vector. And then we want, then we really need to find out or want to print the most relevant or the most uh, similar words of this vector using this function. So let's print the most similar, let's say 20 of them. Um, so let's say 20. So, so um, it's not defined, word whack is not defined. This is WV. So it may take a while um, because it is going to compare this with, so exceptional, 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 outstanding, outstanding, superb, um, unparalleled, uh, excellent, excellent, extraordinary, um, and unsuppressed, uh, unsurpassed, and so on. Um, we can have, for example, top uh, maybe uh, 50 words as well uh, for the same word. And this will give us the um, similarity between. So you can see, um, I mean, these are very, uh, this is very intuitive result, although the different case folding is there for um, the the words, for example, exception is returned three times because of the case cases, it is there in the vocabulary. But still, if you see uh, the number of unique words without a case folding, if you, if you for example, um, just make it lower and get unique. Um, so for example, if for each word, if, you, if, if for that list, if for that list um, that is returned there, let's say, let's print the unique words. For that list, let's join them, all of them, with the space. Let's join them with a space, then make them lower, and then split them um, uh, with a space again, just to make all the list lower. And then we can just convert it to, let's say, NumPy array. And we can have unique. Uh, tokens, for example, np dot unique, and it turns out it should give the uh, unique tokens. Let's have a print command out of that. A lot of a lot of code in one line. Uh, I hope it should run. Uh, so let's see. So it actually gives the um, 
give all the um, the actually this is this unique actually sorts all the things um, it sorts from left to right but now you can see the most the, the words that are most relevant um, without actually the cases uh, we we can we can case for all already because the vocabulary of spacey actually includes the same word with different kind of case uses usage that is there in literature so not just the words we can we can match the documents also so for example this a document or text and let's say we have another document death is truth and let's say we have another document cats and dogs are pets if you see the first two documents are much related and the similarity of document 1 and document 2 looks like a uh, higher however the the similarity of document 1 and document 3 looks like lower so let's run it and see and that's basically the case. This uh, is higher number, 0 0.79 is a higher number. That means the first two texts are much more similar or related. But the first and the third one is no longer that similar. The document similarity in Spacey is actually, uh, is actually done by tokenizing first the, doc the text and then getting uh, word embeddings uh, like I have shown earlier of 300 dimensional word embedding. Get the word embedding of each word for a text document and then just average them out just uh, and finally have an average vector for document one having an average vector for document two and having an average vector for document three and then comparing the two documents is just again the cosine similarity just like uh, the similarity of two vectors um, that's about a very brief uh, and very quick overview of spacey what you can do quickly in spacey obviously spacey is much more than that you can train your own models. You can you can transfer different models. You can you can update the training of different models, even transformers. Even you can fine tune the latest BERT uh, uh, in BERT embeddings in in Spacey and much more. So this is just a quick start. Uh, for more information, I do suggest and recommend to go to the official page on Sp of Spacey and just follow it. It's a tremendous package for natural language pro processing with very modern techniques implemented. Uh, inside it and very easy to use. Um, so uh, I hope you have liked this video. If so, please subscribe our channel, press the like button, and share this video with your friends. And I hope to see you next time.